Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. for joining uh, Release Date Rewind. So this is a podcast, and as you saw on Instagram, which was so amazing that you uh, reached out and commented, and it seems like you're very active with fans on social very media. How does, I mean, yeah, how does it feel to have such an amazing career with these iconic movies like Romeo and Michelle, which just turned 25 years old? How does that feel that your work is still so beloved from 25 years ago? Uh, it feels amazing and, and shocking and surprising. And, you know, when you make the movies, you never think of, okay, I'm making the biggest hit. You're just making the movie. You're just rolling up your sleeves and, you know, trying yeah. to figure out how to create these characters and, you know, serve the script and serve the director and the actors and, you know, make it on time and budget. And, uh, you know, when something lives like this, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 really beautiful in a way. I mean, it's really fun to see all the different generations of women, you know, responding to this material uh, from, yeah. you know, women who were young when they saw it to now their children and now, you know, kids who were never, who were not even born when the movie came out, you know, so it's really, it's, it's feels great. I mean, it, it feels great to have this career too, you know, to inspire women and to inspire people. I mean, I get a lot of, you know, DMs or on my website where people say, you know, I became yeah. a costume designer because of you and I, you know, you inspired me to go into fashion. I mean, that, that means a lot, you know, because Absolutely. we all, you know, when we, when we are writers and where we are, you know, any kind of, I think, creative uh, people, we hope that our work touches others, you know, in some way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, and kind of that's the goal, you know, that there's some emotion that comes from our painting or a story that we write or, you know. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. Absolutely. And and I, I mean, as a fan, I mean, this is just amazing that I'm getting to chat with you for a few minutes because your visions, your designs are some of the most, you know, at the forefront of pop culture and films, not only from back then and now, because I know you've done everything from Romy Michelle and Clueless to The Wedding Singer to Enchanted, which was huge, you know, and even more. But then it must be so cool for you to see your designs come back. You know, there was that Iggy Azalea video a few years oh my ago. God, yes. You know, yes. right? What, what was that like? And what is that like seeing people dress up in your designs for Halloween and all these cool things? That must be so amazing. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy to, to be, you know, to be on the streets on Halloween and see the, you know, Ron and Michelle or, you know, the clueless plaid. And uh, I mean, it's fantastic. I mean, when Iggy Azalea did that, I mean, she, they didn't even contact me. and They did such a good, beautiful job, you know, to really right. serve, serve this, the, the, you know, I mean, they, they really uh, to the T. It was just really beautiful. Um, but I think, you know, as much as I see that, I think also what's what's really cool is like how, you know, the fashion inspires and, and you know, when you're looking at fall 2022 runway shows, you know, how much plaid is there, how much kind of that aesthetic is there, you know, not only because the 90s are back, but kind of this feminine aesthetic, you know, and I, I love that it actually came from the plaid skirt where everything kind of started for us because it was, you know, when we're thinking of school and, you know, what kids wear to school in uniform and, you know, Catholic school girl uniform, the plaid skirt, you know, but then how would Cher do it, you know, in yeah. Beverly Hills, you know, with money and kind of, you know, probably she goes to the runway shows in Italy and, you know, she can pick anything she wants. So it was kind of our version of that, you know, and how that can get spin. And I think how kind of that sensibility or, or style is beloved too. I think it's kind of quintessential girly and, you know, it's the bad girl and it's the good girl, you know, it can be everything kind of in it, you know, so it's, it's fun. And I think that was our goal, kind of that what we were creating with Clueless, you know, was this very fantastical world of high school, you know, where everybody was oh, yeah. super rich and, 
they had the means to do it. Um, but also they had a lot of fun with the clothes. You know, when I worked with Amy Heckling, when, mm -hmm. you know, we started talking about the script, you know, what was really important, uh, that whatever fashion that I bring, because the fashions at the time did not exist. It was all grunge, you know, so people were wearing yeah. big baggy clothes when we went to high schools, you know, it was just like sea of boys and girls looking the same. So yeah. the goal really was kind of to bring the fashion and really kind of bring the girliness back, you know, to kind of really make it very feminine. And, you know, the times were much more innocent than now. So it was more innocence mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, in the clothes as well. And my, you know, important, um, kind of uh, focus was on this too, that when I was bringing the fashion from the future, you know, from the runways, from London and Paris, you know, and kind of now trying to um, sort out what could really live and what could be right for these girls, the young girls, you know, because yeah. we had to incorporate it into the young girls world of high school, you know, Amy Heckling specifically really didn't want like girls running in high heels and, you know, with the midriff right. showing and uh, maybe it would be a different story now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Movie, you know, but I think kind of that, that beauty of, of, you know, these kind of really innocent girl, you know, I mean, some of them had sex, some didn't have sex, you know, but it right. was really kind of that uh, quintessential, um, feeling and I think that what lives and I think maybe that's what still inspires and that's what kind of like it's really a sweet spot for everybody when you watch the movie you know right because we we I think we long for this more than ever now with COVID and everything else we're kind of those times where you know there were simpler times that nostalgia things were kind of, you know pretty nostalgia uh mm -hmm. I miss those times you know myself mm -hmm. um so it's fun. I mean, the whole revival is fun. It's 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 fun to be part of it, to talk about it still, you know, to be able to inspire people. I mean, yeah. all over the world, you know, I mean, it's really such a amazing uh, global phenomenon. I mean, really, oh, for it's, sure. it's 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 I don't think that any other film really in the history. I mean, I mean, there's right. seven year itch or I mean, there's few. Um, but I think for costumes, you know, it's really something extraordinary, I think. Absolutely. Iconic. Yeah. So tell mm -hmm. me, I'd love to know more uh, about you, Mona. How did you get into costume design? Did you know when you were a little girl, you know, that you were going to go to Hollywood and do this? Or did you sort of oh, fall no. into it? Tell no, us no, tell no. us about your, your youth I and how you know got about here. Hollywood. I mean, I grew up in Europe. I was born in India. I grew up in Poland and Germany. Yeah. I mean, but I was the kid who was into fashion. You know, I was always drawing the princesses and making them collections and telling mom what to wear and all the friends. And, you know, um, and I was a funny kid. I didn't really like pink anything. And I was yeah. more like into black and red, you know, sophisticated <laughs> colors only. And uh, I mean, in Poland, uh, my dad's parents were Catholic. So I had to go to first communion and I actually demanded that I wear a pantsuit. Oh, Wow. You know, I was like, that's Businesswoman like, special at a young business age, business right? special. I was like, I'm not going in this poofy dress. I have to look yeah. good. Yeah. So, you know, from, from I think from beginning, somehow I had it inherently in me. So I studied fashion and really that really was my love. You know, I, I studied in Europe. I went to New York and I ended up in L.A. in Fashion Institute. Yeah. And when I was here, you know, I had a bunch of friends, how you are when you're, in, you know, in college, hanging out with film geeks and from UCLA and USC. And they said, hey, you know, we're doing a little thesis film. You in fashion. Can you get us some clothes, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of how it all started. I got you know, first script, little script, you know, short film, and I read it and I met with the director and I had to create this world and the character and really got into the psychology of the person. And the, I mean, I was just hooked, you know, immediately. It was just yeah. more than fashion uh, to me. I mean, I love fashion. You know, I think now costume design and, and fashion are my two loves, but how mm -hmm. I was able to kind of blend it together. And then, you know, I did, there was MTV times and, you know, yeah. I did like music videos run DMC and, you know, silly skit shows, uh, just say Julie. And, yeah. you know, I started meeting people and we actually met with Emmy Heckling on the pilot. Right. The pilot never got picked up, but we formed this really great bond. And, you know, she, she's an incredible visionary, you know, she herself really is just into fashion and, you know, in the day there was no computers. People have to know we were like bringing yeah. tear sheets with, from magazines, you know, and really the way that you had to research this stuff was very different to just having the click now. Wow. 
but you know she hired she wrote clueless and she called me she said you're really the perfect girl because i want this to be very fashion oriented this is a movie about fashion you know you have the background you're also a yeah. costume designer you know we want to really um kind of the exuberance of colors that I always had that, that's kind of signature too for me. Absolutely. You know, she really wanted to, you know, there was a very specific color, color palette that we used yeah. and kind of the rest is history. You know, we, she's, she's just a really great leader. I think, I think mm -hmm. partially the movie is so good, not only because she wrote it and directed, but I think oh, she, yeah. she is a visionary, you know, she really can show, kind of the future she knows how to the lingo you know the oh she yeah. also hires the right people and then the people she lets them do their job you know like i wasn't i'm always into hats and wearing hats and she's like i love hats too so let's do a lot of hats you know and <laughs> which director says that no one you know yeah yeah you know and speaking of directors tell me a little bit of of your process and anyone who's listening who maybe wants to get into costume design you know and i'm sure every film is different every show because i know you also worked on the clueless show and lots of disney channel stuff too and lifetime all sorts of great stuff you've done what's the process like do you normally get a, a lot of time to prep and never find enough things never, never enough, enough time, time. <laughs> never enough time never enough time never enough money never enough assistance you know i mean yeah. uh I mean, the process really is, you know, it's all about the script. It's really about the script. So the script mm -hmm. is the blueprint for everything. You know, you get the script, you meet with the director, you figure out what the story is that they're trying to tell. You know, a different director of Clueless would be a different story. You know, so each director has their own vision that we are, as the people that he hires, you know, for the different department heads, support it. You know, so yeah. then I get, kind of download his information. Then I can go stretch scratch my head and think about you know how i can interpret that, that in my way and how i can bring to the table because you know like amy for example is a great fashion person but then you know romy and michelle director knew nothing about fashion so he was right. kind of like you know, he relied on me and we worked together on a show called the edge which was like a skit comedy with jennifer aniston and you know, oh, a bunch cool. of people julie brown was in it it was kind of like in living color-ish mm. you know in living color kind of that kind of yeah. uh, only lived one season but uh, he knew me and again he was like I want you to do it you know and I want your fashion expertise and you know he was a different kind of carte blanche because he was like do it all I want to approve like how I feel about it but he doesn't know that it's an A-line skirt or a, right. you know cup sleeve so it's a different process with different directors you know how do you right. uh, explain the language of co you know of costumes but they know instinctively the directors what they feel about this character you know yeah. is it too much this way or too much that way so they don't need this language in a sense i'm the one to translate it for them you know absolutely so we get that done and you know once i kind of have his vision i download my i'm you know we start melding it then we get the actors involved and they get their kind of you know input because they feel you know they have their ideas of the backstories and and yeah. also then you have to think of the actor's body you know how that kind of represents and then i you know once i have like the visual boards and sometimes sketches like for enchanted or just you know cutouts from magazines or now you know online visual right. boards from there that's the blueprint now for me for the actor for my team because i have a big team you know wardrobe team who's like you know i have a supervisor who runs the department mm. and i have like the shopper assistant designer who helps me in fittings and i have shoppers you yep. know, when I'm making things, I have seamstresses, pattern makers, boot makers. I mean, in Enchanted, we made everything. The metal stuff for, you know, Queen Teresa, the fabric was made, you know, wow. the embroidery, the leather. I mean, you know, that probably was the longest prep I ever had, which was about seven months. But usually it's about wow. two months, you know, for everything. And it's fast. Right. And, yeah. you know, my shows are very wardrobe heavy. I mean, Alicia had 60 changes, you know, Romy and Michelle, 40 changes. I mean, House Bunny, you know, seven girls, yeah. 30 changes. Oh, my God. Um, you know so i'm kind of like the queen of that and i guess yeah. i just my mind can work this way and, and can figure it out you know how to do it I, I don't even know how i figure it out it's just you're a something. magician it's amazing wow i didn't even think about this magician i have to say yeah yeah all those changes so yeah like you said you're known for this almost like fantasy meets reality those beautiful bright bold colors but you've challenged yourself and some of your films are darker a little scarier like eight millimeter incarnate right. um yeah. uh even yes. i know you've worked with alicia a few times um even it looked like last survivors a recent film more dark <laughs> yes. and gritty yes. so yes. so how does that compare is that easier or just as hard what's that like 
the more it's, dark stuff. Like, to me, it's just the process. It's just the script. So now the script calls for this. So where do I have to go in my mind to kind of get there? I mean, you know, yeah. definitely with 8mm, it was a real scary world that we had to enter of snuff films. And, you know, yeah. you kind of you look at the research, you go, oh, God. You know? yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Some, but it's fun. I mean, it's nice to, you know, I think for any artist, like if you're writing something, you're writing about, you know, comedy, but then you have to do drama or for an actor to be comedic actor and to get to do drama. So it's kind of same for me, you know, where you yeah. get to really um, challenge yourself and go into places that maybe you don't usually go, which is fun. I mean, for Last Survivor, it was really cool because I got to kind of combine military clothes that I cut up with modern clothes and kind of like they had this stuff from you know far back but they they live in this very cold environment so it had to be functional you know you always have to think of how actor is going to move in it can they do this movement can and i mean he always had to go like through the snow and you know yeah. i mean even like night at the Roxbury, you know they had to always move and do the yes. crazy moves so you know how do you always design in the mind to to make the actor's job easier you know so yeah. so many elements that i think you have to think of when you it's, when yeah. you're doing it but you know, it's such a fun and crazy job because we, we truly, you know, when we dress actors and we create that character, when they come on the screen, within 10 seconds, you know who they are. They don't even have to say their lines. Right. I mean, just by the clothes. Are they rich? Are they poor? Are they, you know, yep. in a good mood, bad mood? Are they depressed, happy, fat, sexy, not sexy? You know, every, all that information is there. Right. And I, I find that fascinating. You know, and oh, kind of yeah. the process getting to that character, which, you know, as I said a little bit about my process, but I didn't mention that I think the most important part of the design process happens in the fitting. Mm -hmm. Because you can talk about it and I mean, you can have the meetings with the director, you can have the boards made, you can sketch it and, and not really till the actor gets in the room and then we start putting the clothes on and you, you were like, oh, that mini skirt is going to look so great. And then they don't have great legs. Yeah. And you're like, oh. It's not going to happen. The moment when in a fitting it happens and they, they find it, it's palatable. I mean, it's almost like, you know, you get little goosebumps. Oh, yeah, I bet. And that's the that best moment, you know? Yeah. It's the best moment to and, just... And speaking of fittings, it seems like you've worked, like I said, with Alicia Silverstone a lot, with Drew Barrymore a lot. How important and, and nice must it be to have a connection with a star that you want to keep working with them and dressing them in all your different looks. What's that like through the years, you know? I think it's the same for directors, you know, because yeah. basically what you do, you have a shorthand. So mm -hmm. they know you, they trust you. They kind of, you know, like with Emmy Heckling, you know, I've done many movies with directors yes. and it's like they don't, they know what you can bring to the table. They kind of know your sensibility, not too much, not too little that, uh, you know, we already have a language that we've developed. And I think same with an actor because they know how I can treat their body and how I, what I can do with it. And I can help them hide things or expose things or, yeah. you know, we already have, um, the trust is really important. I think kind of the trust that you really have that you're going to walk into the fitting room. You know, I just worked with Gina Davis after oh, so many years after I, we just did a pilot together. And after so many years, you know, since Stuart Little, she was yeah. so happy to see me, you know, we, we were shooting in Vancouver and she flew there and, you know, she walked into the room and it was, beautiful you know there That's were great so clothes nice. everything fit her she, you know i know that she's six feet tall i know that she's size 11 i know what her body is like you know so there's no she knows it's going to be great yeah yeah like, That's oh my amazing. god it's going to have the best time mona is there you know and right that's, yeah that's what's the fun part. And I think with Drew and, you know, especially with these girls and Alicia, you know, I've done, I think five movies now with Alicia. Right. Yeah. It's really great because it's, it's like, you know, we, it's not just, we are old friends, but we just really know each other, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we, the expectations, you know, there's not like, Oh my God, what's going to happen. And, you know, I, you know, I have this weird thing and they're not going to know about it and they're going to have all their own clothes and right you know, understanding how they work. So kind of like bringing extra things and having, you know, funny stuff like out of the, out of the box too. You know, I mean, Drew is like right. that. She's very involved. She sometimes goes and, you know, shops with me. I mean, not so much anymore, but in the old day, oh, she would go funny. shopping with me, you know, I mean, Alicia does that too. We, we did a movie 
a few years back and she actually went thrift store shopping with me because we oh, can't I return at thrift stores, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then here we are, you know, then we are eating the, the vegan food with her, you know, she's oh, so great. Yeah. Like, that is know. so, oh, you have so many she's, great stories. That's amazing. She's the best. And, you know, I'm very lucky, I think, in my career because I, I am, you know, working lots on women-centric films and, and, and really able to kind of, you know, I think help young women to feel good about themselves, to in their yeah. skins. You know, I mean, I love that scene in Rami and Michelle when they finally come out and there's, you know, pink and blue dress. This is us. Iconic. You know? And then, then yeah. you have never been kissed and the end scene when she's in yes. the pink dress waiting to be kissed. You know, it's like those are the moments, I think, that kind of like where, why I like to tell the stories and be part of these films because this is what we need to give these young girls. You know, this oh, kind of absolutely. Hope. Just being you is better than anything that you're pretending. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Enchanted 2 when it was the first time in Disney history that the princess saves the prince. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's amazing yeah. that you you yeah. are luckily able to work on these projects that not only look great, but truly have some meaning and, and shift yeah. things a little bit. Right now yeah. we're changing the, the story and moving forward. That's amazing. Yes, yes. And yeah. I love that. I really that means a lot to me because I think as a young woman, I want to I want to have them fun. You know, I mean, fashion yeah. is fun. And and. Yeah. I think it can you can express so much that way and not be afraid of you know I, I think things are changing in the world too where now you know the curvy bodies are good and kind of showing the skin maybe not too much but you know right. just enough and being able to be yourself you know and I think that's really because in the 90s it wasn't like that you know it was really yeah. hard to change the world I mean Drew was really a, like a breakthrough person who right. was who she was with the yeah. body that she was without having to be the fake or the, the skinny or whatever it's funny how back but, then there was you know, such the a North, yeah, the, and you know, and those are the studio norms too that yeah. we are breaking. You know, with all of that, which is which is awesome. So I'm I'm very lucky to be with these ladies. You know, yeah. and kind of have that have that reputation and have kind of you know supported with my talent and help them and right. and make it make it easy and fun too. I mean, you know, movie making is very difficult. It's very fast. Oh, yeah. It's time consuming. We are away on from our families and location for many months right. and. You know, we form very close bonds, but we have to help each other. You know, we have to really kind of be For there. Sure. And uh, I mean, this job I just did with Gina was fast and furious. You know, it was just like oh, a crazy, yeah. crazy time. Oh. And, you know, I'm so glad I was there for her to support her. So it's, it's, yeah. it's you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky person. I have to say I'm Absolutely. very lucky because it's not easy to break through. And I think for anybody who's trying to break through, you know, it's just now you have more opportunities with your Instagram, you know, to really yep. show who you are, to really show your talent, you know, show your knowledge. I think being very interesting in what you do, I think that being as much yourself and, and building that, you know, and I don't want to say the word brand because I, I think it's just overused and that's mm -hmm. really not because brand comes to me from the outside. I have to be a certain way to make the money and it's about the money. I think that, right. you know, as an artist, you have to develop who you are because each of us have a unique point of view on the yeah. world. And if, you know, if you can get that out, what that is for you, then it's beautiful to share and maybe interest of out to others, you know, and, Absolutely. And, I, mean, I love hiring people with like really interesting visuals and you know people yeah. who bring something to the table and teach me about new designers local designers or something you know and right. that's really fun so when i'm interviewing people i really want to know what they into yeah you know what are they reading what 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 you know latest collection is their favorite who is their favorite designer you know are they sure. drawing are they making collages are they sewing you know like i mean i didn't have yeah. instagram when i was you know breaking into the business so they they have some better tools now right now now it's maybe easier but also i'm sure harder there's a lot more you know competition but yeah now i mean yes. imagine if you right. had instagram back then and you had all your awesome designs and pictures i mean I'll have I, millions of followers. You, millions you'd be somehow followers. even even bigger, and you're already huge. It's amazing, right? So well, I'm kind yeah. of you know I'm huge, but I'm also a little good secret, which I like it that way. You know, uh, that's that's a good of, way to put it. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, I really you know I really want to teach kind of my next next thing. It's you know I want to do a book and teach and oh, yeah. talk about my process and you know, inspire young minds. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. if I can do it, you can do it. It sounds like you made those iconic dresses in Romeo and Michelle at the end, right? I did, did you, I you did. Made, and I love that I, I had heard Mira Sorvino really is a Star Trek fan. And so yes. the rumor is true, yes. right? That really is yes. the start. Oh my God. Yes. See, that's and so cool that you heard that and you incorporated that exactly. into, right? 
that's exactly. very special. That's you know, that's really kind of working with someone and hearing them and yeah. and uh, but you know, funny story, something we were talking earlier, like the dresses, uh, the two dresses didn't come the way right away. Oh, yeah. I designed the mirror dress and I designed Lisa's dress. And it was a little bit different. It was like chiffon and painted and kind of, I was wanting to be very artsy. And, you know, we, we were making the dress already. We had the final fitting with Lisa and she was like, you know, it's very pretty, but like, what is Mira wearing? And I showed her the dress and we started discussing and she was like, you know, I really want this to kind of be like the mirror image of each other, that they are now really came together as best friend. It's the friendship that solidified. It's like, here we are, you know, we, we are almost the same, but different. Right. And in the last minute, I changed the design to make it out of also spandex and kind of the same exact A-line, you know, empire dress. And that's oh, how cool. it became because of the discussion. I mean, and it's not easy to change something last minute, you know. Right, right. But it was right. And again, I think as, a, as an artist and maybe as a costume designer, you have to kind of go with the flow too. You have to be open up. You can't be so... This is yeah. my idea. This is how I want it. You know, I mean, film is very collaborative. It's things just change all, all the time, the right? Night, you know, and then things are changing. So you have to go with it. You know, I mean, it's to the moment of actor could be walking onto the set and they just like, oh, I just hate this. I don't not feeling great. And you have to yeah. run back, tell them, hold on. And then we find something else, get them ready. And, you know, they yeah. back at it. Have all your backup plans, right? All your backup ideas. Backup. Pick sure. up a backup. <laughs> <laughs> well, my last question for you is, yeah. it's a two-parter. Yeah. Would you want to work on and see a Romeo and Michelle sequel? Because it seems like there's a lot of interest. And besides Romeo and Michelle, what's another movie you've worked on that you would hap happily do again? Maybe a sequel or a, a reboot or something. So so first up, Romeo and Michelle, would you do a second one? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Do, what, do you, what do you think the odds are of that happening? Do you know? It's, you... it's they pushing. I know that the girls <gasps> wants to do it too. So I think if they have, I mean the huge 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 names now yeah you know? oh my gosh uh, yeah that'd be great hopefully whoever has the rights is smart that's all yes. i have to say right absolutely uh, and then yes yeah, so then any of your other amazing things what would you like to go back to do you want to do a sequel to never been kissed or clueless or night of the roxbury what would you love to go back to i'm looking at my, my own resume <laughs> yeah it's long <laughs> You even did the haunted mansion. You you've done so many amazing things. Oh my god! Oh my god! I mean, House Bunny could be kind of funny. Yeah, that would, and I'm a lot of variety. What like to you them? said, with the different women. Yeah, grown up what now. What happened to them? I mean, it would be a lot of work, but I think it would be really fun. You know, I really yeah. had a nice time doing the American reunion because it was kind of like it was them years later. Yeah, that had to be so interesting for you to come into a franchise because I believe that was the fourth movie. So yes. you didn't work on previous movies no. in that franchise. So that must have been kind of a little weird and cool and a little it's bit of a cool challenge. Because you kind yeah. of, you know, it's challenging. How do you now, you know, the same people years later, how do you retain their characteristics yeah. without being, you know, over the top? Or, I mean, it's hard. I mean, look at Sex and the City. I think it was hard for them to do it. You yeah. know, it's not an easy thing. How do you move with the times? How do they change? You know, do they yep. stay the same and wear the same crazy things or they actually evolved in some right. different way, you know? So again, those are kind of the cool things you talk to the director about. You talk to yeah. the actors and, you know, everybody has their little idea how to formulate it. And then really when you step into the fitting room again, things really come together, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Mona, thank you so very much for doing this. This was an amazing right. chat. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.